Building on our previous demonstrations of IBM Maximo with IBM Cognos Analytics, we're now going to take our content that we've uploaded, prepared, and explored and create Cognos data presentations. And the first thing we're going to do is create a simple report. So let's head on over to Cognos to show how to do that. Here we are in Cognos Analytics, and now we're going to move on to our fourth section of Cognos where we present the data. So to recap quickly, we have taken some Maximo data, we uploaded it into Cognos, we prepared it, added some calculations, streamlined the date fields. We had some great explorations, explorations that Cognos presented to us and that we created on our own, but now we wanna present the data. Well, what does that mean? Cognos gives us three options to present our data, a dashboard that we're all familiar, familiar with and also a report, and it also gives you the capability to create a story. A story is where you guide someone through the analytical information. Think of a newspaper article or a magazine article where you lead the user and have them all reach the same conclusion. So really powerful features here. And let's start by actually creating a report. And the reason I wanna create a report first is a report I create, I'm actually gonna then connect to my dashboard so I can highlight how I drill down from a dashboard into a report. So let's get started. I simply click on my report. And now the first thing that Cognos says is what kind of template do you wanna use? It gives you a variety of templates. I can see something very simple, one column to multiple columns. And you'll also notice there's two types, a one column versus a one column active report. Active reports in Cognos have the greatest amount of functionality. They're often used in offline mode. Imagine you're in a place with limited connectivity, maybe an airplane and you wanna analyze some data. That's what active reports can help you with. But again, we're gonna start really slow here, simple. And I'm just gonna take a one column report and click okay. As soon as I do, do that, it brings up a palette, a palette for the report developer to populate. A couple of things that you'll see that we've seen throughout the other Cognos data modules is my menu up on the top. Over here, I have my um, menu of items that I'm gonna work with on the left-hand side. The same data exploration, right? Our data module in that tree view, and then our toolbox. Really familiar functionality that you know, as you use Cognos more and more, you'll see these same icons, same functionality. But let's imagine I don't know where to start with. So like anything in Cognos, I'm gonna look for that blue button that's gonna guide me. And it says the first thing I need to do is select a source. Does that make sense? So I select it. It brings up my dialog where I can navigate through my content and I wanna select the same one that I've been working with, my de demo module. If I open this up, Yep, I can start to see all those fields or attributes that I brought in from Maximo. The very top are my calculations. So this looks like the right data set for me to work with. So now I've done that. Now I've got to build my report. So you can see Cognos at the top is giving you the most common, you know, features or functionality to start that report building. And I see everything from a table, a visualization, cross tab, but I'm just going to start with a simple list. So I'm gonna take my list and say, yep, that's what I wanna bring over. Cognos gives me the option to name this. If I'm gonna have multiple objects, multiple queries in my report, I'm definitely gonna to wanna to do that so I can keep track. But we're starting real simple and we're just gonna leave it like that. So now Cognos says, okay, here's your table, or excuse me, here's your list. Now you've gotta drop your items here to, to create your columns. Okay, to do that, I click back on my data source. And because this is a detail report, I wanna get some of those details in here. I wanna take my work order number, for example, and bring him in there. After I've got my work order number, oftentimes maybe I wanna grab my description. Um, I'm gonna grab my failure code, that's important to me. But let's come down here and let's say we want status and um, I'm guessing here work type. I clicked work type and then clicked work priority. So let's take them both of those in there. That looks great. Um, and then let, maybe let's just bring something in here um, just from another field. So you can see that we have that. Um, what else do we want? 
um, I shouldn't be so picky here. Sorry about that. But um, maybe I want to grab my, I don't know, actual finished year. Perfect. So what have I got? I've got a bunch of fields over here. I have a scroll bar on the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can see I've built up my report. That looks really good. I can see over here on the left my properties versus my page design. But now I want to add a couple more things. First, I want to give it a title. What am I going to call this? I'm actually looking at my work order analysis, and I'm going to skip ahead, and I'm going to say I'm going to add failure code here because I want to add failure code as my parameter. So what does that mean? Well, I've got all this data, and we all know in Maximo, we typically like to apply a query or a filter. But I don't have the ability to create that filter, you know, launching context um, in a dashboard from Maximo, right? So I'm going to add that filter here. What, what am I rambling on about? What does that mean? So let me come back to my toolbox, open up my prompt, and I want to add a text box prompt. So I always think sometimes if I show, it's better than explaining. So I take that text bo box prompt, and I'm just going to drop it there. And as soon as I do that, Cognos displays, <clears throat> excuse me, a dialog that I need to populate. What is my parameter name? Make sure you put this in here so your user knows what the parameter is. We don't want to leave it as parameter one. They won't know what the heck that means. So I've get given it a name. Now I click next. Now it says, well, what is that? You know, what is that attribute? What is that field? In Maximo, we say, what are we binding it to? Well, I simply open up my package or my module, and I want to grab my failure code. Now remember, Cognos isn't doing any validation here because it doesn't know what that field is in Maximo. You have to make sure you've got that correct. And now I'm going to click Finish. So before I do anything else, I want to quick save this to make sure that I've got this correct. I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to call it my Woe Failure Analysis Report. Perfect. And I'm going to click Save. All right, excellent. So now I have this report that I've created, but I want to run it. I want to run it to make sure that it's displaying as I expect. So to do that, I navigate to my top toolbar and I select the Run Actions. Cognos presents a number of different ways that I can view the content. I'm just going to select the browser or HTML. It brings up a new page and it shows my prompt. I'm not sure if this dialog displays to you or not, but it goes out and looks through my data set and brings back all the values for failure codes. I'm going to go ahead and select boilers and click OK. And once I do that, I can now see the content. I only have one work order record. Um, that has a description of pump maintenance. I can see the failure code of, of boilers that I selected, the row priority, and when it was finished. So really nice functionality. But now how do I get back to where I was? I'm just going to click out that new report. I don't want to save that. That was just my experiment, right? And I want to make sure I click Save. A couple other things that have been happening behind the scenes if we've created this report. Um, is that I now have a new data item, a query, or excuse me, a new data item available from my left-hand side. So this is, again, showing all the fields that I've selected to display in my report. And again, this will build up exponentially with the more complex reports that you've created. And also notice this edit button. This has thrown me a couple of times. If I ever open up a report and I can't figure out how the heck to, how come it's not letting me make changes? Make sure your edit button is on. I can toggle that on and off, and that often happens for you not to be able to display that content or work with the content that you have. So again, what we've done here, just a, in a matter of minutes, we've created a very simple list report here of some Maximo data using a failure code. And then we'll continue to utilize this report as we move forward with our demonstrations. Thank you very much for your time.